So just to uh, briefly give you an overview of, of what I will, will cover today, um, and I suppose very much I'm going to focus on where we find ourselves now in Ireland, the, the economic circumstances we find ourselves in, um, and I'm going to outline for you the strategy we have in place uh, to tackle our current economic difficulties and just provide you with some information on the progress we feel we have made and the outstand, outstanding challenges that we still have to address. So just by way of context, and uh, I'm just going to you know, take you back a little bit here and just trace the evolution of the Irish economy over the last number of decades. I guess uh, it's important to bear in mind that uh, maybe unlike Japan, the Irish economy for a long time in the post-war period very much underperformed relative to its European and international peers. And it was really only in the 1980s that the economy started to expand at uh, a modest rate. Um, the economy started to pick up slowly during the 1980s. What this graph shows is the growth rate over five-year periods. Um, and, you know, even in the late 1980s, early 1990s, Ireland was by far one of the poorest countries in the then EU 12 or EU 15. Um, our GDP per head was maybe about 70, 75% of the EU average. Uh, and it was really only in the 1990s that the economy started the, to seriously catch up or converge on our richer EU neighbours. There was a gradual acceleration in economic activity in the early 1990s. But the real, I suppose, a period of very strong growth in the Irish economy was in the late 1990s. And I think what, what, what you saw in this period was the benefits of a, of a number of reforms that had been introduced many years previously started to bear fruit and started to bear fruit in a very favourable international economic conditions. So in this period, the economy powered ahead, growing by almost 10% per annum over the uh, second half of the 1990s, such that I think by 1997, GDP per capita in Ireland was on a par with the uh, EU15. Uh, and this, this, this performance was very much driven by exports, um, particularly by Ireland's ability to attract foreign, uh, foreign direct investment to, to the Irish economy. Now, as we uh, moved into the uh, first part of the last decade, I guess what happened in this period was that the economy still continued to perform fairly strongly albeit not at the heady rates of the late 1990s, but the composition of growth changed. The eco economy became less competitive, and growth was driven by domestic demand, and particularly, as has been well documented, by, by investment in housing and in residential investment. And uh, this, together with, I guess, uh, these, these, these developments left Ireland pretty poorly exposed when the international economic crisis hit in 2008. And as you know, we have suffered a, a very serious uh, uh, economic contraction. Um, GDP, GDP uh, has fallen by about 11% from peak to trough. And this hit our public finances very, very severely, with tax revenues falling by some 30% between 2007 and 2009. Now, so we have suffered a very, very severe shock. Um, just to give you a kind of a snapshot of something I'll, I'll, of some of the things I'll cover later, we are now working through uh, the imbalances that had built up in the economy over the earlier part of the last decade. Um, you know, having suffered a very, very serious contraction in economic activity in 2008 and particularly in 2009, we are starting now to see a slow pickup in economic activity. This graph shows the rate of growth in GDP, the rate of growth, or should I say decline, as it is in employment and the current account balance. And what you see is that growth returned to the economy in 2011. The rate of decline in, in employment, uh, employment is still falling, but at a much slower rate. And the third aggregate shown there, or the third indicator, our current account has moved into surplus. And I'll talk a bit about those uh, uh, developments in, in more detail as I go through the rest of the presentation. So that's just a little bit of context. Um, now, in terms of the theme of, of our discussion today is strategies for economic recovery and strategies for economic growth. Well, what's our strategy? Well, in a way, our strategy is 
threefold essentially, three pillars to our strategy for economic recovery. And this strategy is obviously articulated in the, uh, uh, in the Troika programme, which we have agreed, which the government has agreed with the IMF, the European Commission and the European Central Bank. So there are three main planks to that. Uh, firstly, to recapitalise and restructure our banking system. Secondly, to restore order to our public finances. And thirdly, uh, to restore competitiveness, to improve the, the economy's competitive position and to lay the conditions for a return to sustainable economic growth. And I'll talk a little bit about these, this strategy now as I go through the remaining slides. Um, firstly, just to say a little bit about the programme. The programme obviously involves uh, uh, financial assistance in the total amount of €85 billion, Euro, of which €67.5 billion Euro is being provided by our external partners. Uh, as I'm sure you all know, this is not a free lunch. Uh, there are... This, is, there, this program is subject to very strict conditionality. A series of particular conditions or reforms are agreed by the Irish government with, with the, uh, our Troika uh, counterparts, and we have to uh, report on these every quarter, and we are subject to uh, a review mission by, by our Troika partners. The good news is that we have met all of the conditions so far. The Troika was here just uh, last month and again confirmed that we had met all of the conditions uh, for the latest period. Now, at the heart of this uh, the Troika programme is a programme to uh, improve our, our public finances situation. And this takes the form of a multi-year programme of fiscal consolidation uh, over the period, well, going right back to 2011. But if we just look at it from here, up, from now until 2015, basically the programme involves uh, a set of annual adjustments, uh, roughly broken down as between two thirds of the adjustment being made on public expenditure and one third uh, in terms of increases in taxation. Um, and you see the figures there uh, in the budget for 2013 introduced by my minister in December. Uh, that laid out, uh, comprised, uh, it, the total adjustment there was some 3.5 billion euro as again broken down as between an adjustment in expenditure of about 1.9 and revenue by one, uh, revenue raising measures of a one and a half million euro. Um, and for 2014 and 2015 taken together, the, 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 the budgets for those years will involve an additional adjustment of about 5.1 billion euro. And the aim of that is to bring the budget deficit to uh, agreed 3% uh, target by 2015. I think it's important to bear in mind too that as well as this, this kind of program of consolidation, uh, the Troika program does involve uh, various commitments to try to improve the quality of public finances in a longer run perspective, very structural measures to improve the quality of the public finances. And these include the Fiscal Responsibility Act passed late last year. Uh, we've established an independent Irish Fis Fiscal Advisory Council and adopted a, a, a medium-term expenditure framework. So these, I think, are important changes designed to ensure that we try to avoid getting into these kinds of uh, difficulties in our public finances again. Um, as well as the programme of consolidation and the various actions to uh, restructure our banking system, the programme does include a strong structural reform component, and this is, a very, this is I know, a, 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 an issue that uh, Japan is facing as well. They, they need to consider different types of structural reforms to improve the growth potential of its economy. <coughs> um, I think it's important to say that, uh, you know, we are starting from a reasonably good position. Uh, if you look, say, at the work of the OECD, uh, which is, is a pioneer in this area of, uh, or a leading authority in the area of structural reform, uh, Ireland scores pretty well on, you know, multi-annual assessments, multi, uh, on assessments of our, you know, the flexibility of the economy in terms of labour markets, <laughs> labour market, and product markets. Uh, notwithstanding that, the government is active in, in implementing a series of reforms under the Troika programme. Obviously, some of these are very much centred on improving the delivery of public services. So there's a very ambitious programme of public sector reform. And that has yielded very substantial reductions in the costs of running the public service. Uh, it's been about a 13% in public service salaries over the last number of years. And uh, by 2015, uh, it's estimated that the public service will be one-eighth smaller than it was uh, in 2007. 
um, a critical issue facing Ireland and, and many countries in the OECD, and, and including, I know, Japan, is the ageing of the population. And one of the actions, I think a critical long-term reform that we have now enacted in Ireland is to increase our state pension age from 65 as it is now in a number of steps to reach 68 by 2028, when it will be the uh, joint highest in the European Union. And again, this will, in terms of you know, looking at the public finances in a longer term perspective, this is a very important reform. Uh, the program also in, in incorporates a number of microeconomic reforms in the area of the labour market and in, pro in, in product market reforms, uh, including the deregulation of some aspects of the medical and legal professions. The rationale there is to lower barriers to entry and increase competition in these uh, professions which have been hitherto quite sheltered. Uh, reflecting our very high uh, unemployment rate, uh, there's also a, very, a series of labour market reforms um, which the government has pursued since taking office just over two years ago. Uh, there was a major overhaul of uh, sectoral wage, making, me wage setting, setting mechanisms in a number of sectors. Um, and the government has launch, launched a number of initiatives designed to increase employment and tackle unemployment. This includes the Jobs Initiative, which was a, a measure aimed at targeting jobs creation in uh, labour-intensive sectors, mostly tourism. The Pathways to Work programme, which is a labour market activation programme designed to, to uh, try to tackle the very serious problem of long-term unemployment now facing the Irish economy and to, provo to, to help the long-term unemployed find their way back into the labour market. And on Friday, some of you may have uh, heard that uh, the latest action plan for jobs uh, for 2013, in fact, was announced by the Minister for Jobs, Enterprise and Innovation. And this comprises a series of very specific action points, all designed to increase jobs and to improve the uh, efficiency of the labour market. So um, that's what we've been doing. Now, um, in the last part of the presentation, I just want to kind of try to bring together where, you know, what, what have we, you know, is this all working? And just to talk a little bit about the challenges that, that still face, face our economy. I think firstly, uh, for me, the, probably the, the, the standout uh, development or achievement uh, thus far has been a very substantial improvement in the competitiveness of the Irish economy. And as a small open economy, competitiveness is really the key to, 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 to economic growth. And what you see here in this, uh, on the graph on the left-hand side, is that relative to the Eurozone average, our labour costs uh, are projected that by 2014, they will have improved by almost a quarter vis-a-vis -vis the Eurozone average. So it's a very substantial improvement. And in a way, this is reflected in the performance of our export sector. Exports have now recovered to, and are in fact are now above pre-crisis uh, levels. So this again is a very significant development. And as we would have, I, I guess, anticipated, export growth is sort of the driving the initial phases of economic recovery. Um, and this is reflected obviously in a very significant improvement in our current account, which I, I, I mentioned earlier. Uh, the current account uh, has moved into surplus. Um, and I guess, you know, the improvement in the recovery in, in, in exports reflects some of the, I guess, enduring advantages we enjoy. Uh, economy still is very open. Uh, we have uh, a presence in high technology sectors, which are less prone to uh, perhaps the cyclical downturns uh, facing uh, some, of, some of the other European countries which have found themselves in, in difficulty. Uh, we have a well-educated workforce, um, <coughs> and our population structure is still relatively favourable by, by European standards. And the various league tables that are compiled by different international agencies in terms of a country's attractiveness for foreign direct investment still show us doing pretty well. There are issues we have to address, obviously, but, you know, in terms of key indicators or metrics like the availability of skilled labour, flexibility of our workforce... And the, the, the incentives available for foreign firms to invest in Ireland, we are still doing pretty well. In terms of the uh, fiscal consolidation programme, well, that's, that's on track too. Um, 
the um, we the target for 2012 was a general government deficit of 8.6 percent of GDP. Um, we think, in fact, it will come in under 8 percent now. Uh, the European Commission uh, published its latest forecasts uh, for the European economy on Friday, and it's saying it, I think, projected that the outturn will be 7.7 percent of GDP. So we're on target, and all of the various targets for the primary deficit, that's the deficit excluding interest payments, and for net debt targets set out under the Troika programme, all of those targets have been met so far. And so the programme is on track to bring us to a situation where the primary balance, that's the budgetary balance, less interest payments, should be in surplus, uh, albeit a small surplus, by 2014. Um, the economy has returned to growth. Uh, now, this is not by any means anything like the seller growth rates we enjoyed in the past, but the uh, economy grew by, um, we estimate, by about just under 1% uh, last year. And we're expecting uh, a modest acceleration to growth in GDP of about 1.5% uh, this year, with a, a gradual recovery over the medium term, with growth averaging about 25 to 2.25% over the medium term. And it's just important to say that these forecasts obviously do incorporate the latest uh, information and forecasts of the international economic agencies. So, so, so that is incorporated into, into the numbers. And there's a table there showing our relative performance vis-a-vis -vis some of our... Uh, uh, some, some other EU economies. I guess the uh, ultimate verdict on all of this is, is the one uh, that the, the bond market uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, decides. And uh, what you see here is a very substantial uh, Im improvement, uh, uh, narrowing in our yields and differential vis-a-vis differential -vis the core EU economies of Germany and France. And in fact, the 10-year bond rate is now uh, below, below uh, 4%, in fact. And our Treasury Management Agency has uh, auctioned a number of short-term issue, uh, number of short-term uh, issues, and uh, has plans to issue more. So I think this is really, uh, you know, a very significant development. Uh, but as uh, my Secretary General said at a recent gathering, this obviously assumes that we continue on the track that we're on. So we have to implement the remaining commitments under the Troika program. Uh, because that is, in a way, in many ways, probably priced into these uh, into these bond yields. Okay. Uh, having said all that, uh, we cannot, in, in any way, uh, afford to be complacent um, because we do. The economy faces very significant challenges. Uh, as I've said, the pattern up to now is that growth is being led by exports, which is what we would have expected, uh, and that is very much on foot of the gains in competitiveness that we have secured. Um, however, uh, obviously, the international eco economic situation uh, and the situation in the Eurozone remains very challenging, and obviously that limits uh, what we, we can achieve. Um, we are still, you know, I think for this process to, to really uh, prove successful, we need to see a recovery in domestic demand, but that is very difficult in, in circumstances where we are embarking on a very significant program of fiscal consolidation, and, you know, we still have a number of private sector imbalances, household indebtedness to walk through. Uh, so that is going to be a slow process. Um, but it, it really, a recovery in the domestic economy is critical to uh, an improvement in the labour market and an increase in employment and reduction in employment. So the government is looking at what it can do to stimulate and support the domestic economy because we know that this is really critical to secure uh, an improvement in the labour market position. So just by way of conc conclusion, um, I've covered a lot of ground, and, and I hope I haven't uh, confused you with all of those uh, 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 graphics. Um, the, uh, so I think a couple of key messages. Uh, firstly, the economy has returned to growth 2011 for the first time in four years. Uh, we do believe that the you know, inherent strengths of the economy are still in place, uh, and uh, in particular, we have managed to secure a very substantial improvement in the economy's competitive position, which has uh, given rise to uh, strong export growth. And we have implemented all of the targets under the Troika program, and a return to the markets is underway. But obviously, uh, you know, we still have a lot to do. Um, uh, I think we have made a significant 
and determined uh, policy response to the difficulties we face. We are on course to uh, eliminate, to correct the defi deficit by 2015. Uh, a determined approach is being pursued to uh, sort out our difficulties in the banking sector. There's been a large improvement in competitiveness. And obviously, uh, the government is now very focused on trying to uh, take initi whatever initiatives ca it can take within the diff very difficult constraints it faces to improve the uh, situation in the, in, in the labour market. And that obviously remains the, the standout challenge facing the economy now with a, an unemployment rate of 14.6%. Uh, that, that really is, is what, what I think now the government is very much focused on. So I, I'll leave it at that. I hope that's uh, been of some interest to you in setting out you know, our economic strategy here in Ireland, and uh, I look forward to uh, participating in the rest of the discussion. Thank you for your attention.